Hey, everyone. This is Mike Gormley. It is the Mike Gormley Show. Um, my pleasure to have a, a really excellent artist that um, is sort of getting active again after a little, some sort of break. But uh, Gary Myrick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mike. I'm happy to be here. Um, now, there's a new record out called Some of All My Sins. Yep. Um what 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 was it what was the last time you decided to do something like this and I was we're not all the way back to Havana 3 a.m you've been doing things in between right yes I've been doing solo stuff I've been playing guitar for other people uh, which I've done all along since the beginning of of my recording career I, I've also played guitar for other people I also play lap steel uh slide and things like that so you know, I, I run around doing some of that kind of stuff, but I made a uh, a record that not too many people know about during the pandemic because, you know, nobody could play gigs or shows or do it really much of anything. So I went in the studio and it's all 12 string acoustic guitar and it's called the uh, uh, it's called Gary Myrick Forever Adventures in 12 string. And it's it's also all analog recording. So I had a great time with that. I'm really happy, happy with it. And in fact, on this new record, which is very electric, the sum of all my sins is uh, I, I brought in one of the tracks from that acoustic 12 string record as the very last track on the record of this new record, because this new record is very electric. And uh, which I exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, I had a great producer, uh, Robert Margaliff. He's kind of a legendary producer. He did all the Stevie Wonder stuff in the 1970s, the best Stevie Wonder stuff, you, you know, living in the city oh, and all that. Can we pause for a sec? Oh, yeah. Jeremiah? Sure. Jeremiah? I don't think hold, I'm... hold on, hold on. Hey everyone, this is Mike Gormley, and it in fact is the Mike Gormley Show. I'm proud to say, uh, we have also proud to say our, our who our guest is today is a gentleman named Gary Myrick, who uh, you would know from a lot of activity uh, in the '80s and '90s and up to uh, recent times. The new uh, EP that has come out is called "Some of All My Sins," and it's available everywhere, as they say. Uh, hi, Gary. How you doing? Good, Mike. Good to see you. So what have you been doing since, uh, I don't know, Havana 3 a.m., which is a long time ago, or or what else? What else has been going on? Well, uh, you know, I'm always working on music or I'm working on some sort of artistic project. And uh, so uh, I made a totally acoustic 12-string album during the pandemic, when that happened, because, you know, there, it was very hard to play shows. And one of my favorite things is to play live. But so I just went into the studio then and recorded a completely solo, uh, no band, just me, a, a 12 string acoustic guitar and vocals. And I was and I also recorded it completely uh, analog. So it was actually recorded onto tape, like the old days. And most of my records uh, were recorded analog anyway, from the from the eighties and nineties, um, and then they were you know turned into CDs and things like that. But uh, and of course I've worked on Pro Tools a million times, and that's no problem. I, I'm not against digital. Digital has its place for certain things. I just wanted to get the warmth of the sound. And then, and then I even started my little record company, uh, the sound of vinyl music, the sound of vinyl records. And so I, this new record is out on my, my personal label. So. And um, is that, are you going to do more on that label or is that uh, just for the convenience lately or what, what are your plans on that? Well, I, I my plans are to <clears throat> just utilize it as a tool. So I just wanted to make this record. So I, you know, I just said, well, I'll just put it on my label, and then 
you know, if I want to license it to someone, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can do things like that, but it, I just kind of needed a, a, a title for it, a home for it, you know? Sure. Uh, let's go back to the beginning because it's quite interesting. You're from Texas. Yeah. Born and raised. You were playing. Fifth generation. Five generations, dude. Excuse me. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, playing guitar, is that part of the family the all five generations and it just you the no 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 i was i'm a i'm the lone cowboy <laughs> i uh i my my mother was uh uh very artistic minded and she was uh she saw early on when i was a very young child she thought that i was creative and she said she actually came to me and said you know, you're creative. You should play an instrument. And mm. I went, oh, okay. I was really amenable as a child. I'd go, I'd say okay to anything. Oh, okay, let's do it. And so I did, I said, okay. But, and then I said, well, what, what should I play? And uh, she, she said, what would you like to play? I said, I don't know. How about trombone? Oh man. What an idiot. What am I talking about? No, not trombone. So, you know, I'm a child and my dad had played trombone in high school or something. So, you know, I don't know. I, I wanted to be like my dad, I guess. But and then my mom goes, no, no, not trombone. Play guitar. I love guitar. And I went, OK. And that was it. And then I started doing it. Then I started going to lessons. My mother would take me. I was 10 years old and my mother would take me downtown Dallas to a really great, a vintage uh, music store with great guitars, which I ended up buying guitars there mm -hmm. uh, through the years. I, I bought two 1958 Stratocasters in that store for $400 each so back in the day. And now they're worth 30 grand. You, you still have them? No, they've been stolen. Oh no! So, oh, it's horrifying. It's a it's a crazy story too. Wow. Yeah, if you want to hear it later, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, I just you know I took lessons for two years to learn the basics and chords and what every note was and what what it meant and and you know strumming techniques. My mom said, uh, you know, I love Spanish guitar, so I learned to finger pick from my mom, and really, it was all instigated by my mother yeah and and i've always given her the credit because it was very sweet and very caring to to get me going in that direction and then it became my life's work so it just shows how important parents really are well it does because most parents maybe in those days it might be not so much i don't know but most parents are against the idea other than maybe some amateur playing or play around uh, the, the fire or whatever it might be yeah but yes and not, that's fine that's fine yeah but they don't usually open the door for their child to get involved or maybe she didn't mean for you to do that she just wanted you to have an artistic expression but i think that's all she wanted is to me to express myself because she thought i was creative yeah. but it ended up being you know, I started writing songs really early on, like by age 14, I was writing some songs and I was, you know, I mean, when you're a kid that age, you, you just really kind of want to meet some girls. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, when I wrote a couple of songs, I was, I remember I was playing at a party and some girls were going, wow, I really like that song. That's your song. Right. And I went, yeah. And I went, oh, well, this songwriting thing, this is good. <laughs> this is great and i was i would probably do it anyway but i'm just saying you know you 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 become your identity at that age you know you're becoming who you really are and so writing about it, at that age? i'm sorry what were you writing about at that age who knows i the only i, I wrote a song called diamonds and pearls i know a prince did a song called diamonds and pearls but i did it way before that way many years before that and it sounded nothing like his his song, but uh, it was really simple. It, it was kind of blues changes, and it was rocking. And uh, so, you know, I was writing 
stuff that I probably didn't even know about because I was, you know, I'm a kid. I'm a teenager, a young teenager. Yeah. You, you, as you, you played on, you got you, you got a following. You were playing in different bands, but you had yeah. an interesting, interesting connection with the great Texan guitarist Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, yeah. I mean, I I don't want to make it sound like you were in the same band, but tell us how you're connected no. with that. Well, I I replaced Stevie Ray in a band in Austin. And so I was playing a place in Dallas called The Cellar. And it was a real seedy place in downtown Dallas that was that a lot of musicians could make a living playing there. Mm -hmm. And so and I was doing all my own material. So I had a four piece band, two guitars, bass and drums, and we were playing at the cellar. And all the guys, that, all the bouncers that worked at the cellar had a gun on. Uh, I mean, this is Texas, right? This mm -hmm. is Texas a long time ago. Of course, now it's, now it's legal, legal to have a gun. Uh-oh, I've got a dog that's barking in the background. Ziggy, be quiet. Anyhow. I didn't we'll hear him. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear him? Okay, good. Yeah, he's barking. He's barking. I don't know what he's thinking. Can can I grab my dog real quick so he doesn't bark and drive me crazy? It'll it'll take me two seconds. He's right around the corner here. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Sing a song, Mike. I'll be right back. You, you don't want that, man. No, I don't. Okay. Nice guitars. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that gave gave us an opportunity to look at all his collection there. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Nice guitar collection. Oh, there's a puppy. There he is. Here's where's one of my five dogs. So if I put him over here, he won't bark because he's oh. he's wanting my attention for some reason. Oh, okay. So anyhow, I was playing the cellar in downtown Dallas, and I was having a great time. I was about uh, about 20, 20 years old, and uh, it was just the weirdest place in a good way. Uh, you know, it's it's a great memory, mm -hmm. but it was also crazy. So I was playing there and uh, I had played in Austin in another band earlier that I had written all the material for also. So I'd been to Austin in those days. And Austin was a super sleepy little blues town, hippie town, and it was really great then because it wasn't overrun as it is now. It's really yeah. overrun. Yeah. And it but it wasn't at all. And it was really fantastic. The atmosphere there was wonderful. So I knew some musicians down there and uh that I had met through time. And uh the band that I was playing in at uh the cellar was getting a lot of notoriety because it was all original material which was unusual at the time in Texas too. Most people were doing covers. And so this guy walks in with his girlfriend and it's uh, who I kind of knew and his name was Uncle John Turner. And Uncle John was the drummer for a band called Cracker Jack. Mm. And Cracker Jack was the biggest band in Austin at the time. And... uh he came up to me and he said, uh, I wonder if you would play guitar for my band in Austin. And I knew who he was and I knew that they were the biggest in Austin, which attracted me. And I went, well, that's, you know, let's, well, what do you mean? He goes, he goes, I want you, I, I'd like you to replace my guitarist that we have now. And, uh, uh, of course, Stevie hadn't, you know, made any records or, he hadn't really done anything except he was playing in Cracker Jack. And, and I didn't really know Stevie. I, I think I knew Jimmy Vaughn at the time. Uh, Cause Jimmy was, uh, you know, they're both from Dallas too. Uh -huh. And so I went down to Austin, joined the band and, uh, and then we started playing around and, and, they were making the best money and we were also doing original material in that band, but it was real blues rock. And uh, I wanted to get a more a tap uh, to blues. 
And Austin really had a blues culture that was stronger than Dallas. So I really enjoyed that and wanted to, you know, learn certain things. And, and that was real helpful. And Uncle John was real helpful because Uncle John, uh, also Tommy Shannon from Double Trouble, uh, who played in Double Trouble later, was our bass player in Cracker Jack. So it was Tommy Shannon and Uncle John who, Uncle John and Tommy were the rhythm section for the Johnny Winter Trio before all uh -huh. that. But then and they started this band after that, they they weren't playing with Johnny anymore. And so I played with those guys. We ha I was having a great time. I was into it. And uh, and I was, you know, learning some things that I need I needed to learn and wanted to learn. And yeah. they were real, they were they were ahead of me in the in the blues category. It sounds like kind of uh Texas had a guitar fraternity. Um, you know, I mean, it always has. It yeah. always has. You mentioned yeah. Bonnie Winter and of course Stevie Ray Vaughan and yourself and other guitars. Were you were you crossing paths with all these guys? Were you uh was it a was it a fraternity in a way? Or was it well it was it was pretty friendly, you know. It was it, you know, Texas was really friendly back then and still is. Uh, and, uh, we would cross paths because we were all playing gigs. Nobody was really making records except for Johnny Winter. See, Johnny Winter had left. He'd already kind of, kind of made, he'd already made it, you mm -hmm. know, and he was out making records. He was in New York. He had left, uh, Uncle John and Tommy weren't with him anymore. And so they had started that band in Austin and they were quite successful at it and uh so we would cross paths with different people all the time and uh uh were you teaching each other were you picking up stuff uh, as you well were... i was listening real hard to you know and i was also listening to other uh, musicians that were like even drummers i was listening i mean i'm a guitar player but you know i was i was looking for guys that could really play a good shuffle I mean, a really strong shuffle. If you could play this a strong shuffle, you you could be the best drummer in Austin at that time. Uh -huh. So, so, uh, uh, I you know there was a lot of crossing. I ended up jamming with Johnny Winter at a club, uh, and it was connected to this. So there was somewhat of a fraternity. Uh -huh. Um. So. I want to I want to get into some other uh, guitars I know you came across and also how this new recording came together. Uh, from that recording is a song called "On the Road Again," which we're going yeah. to we're going to we're going to head out to a commercial in a little bit and we're going to listen to that on the way out. Sure, but it's not the Willie Nelson song "On the Road Again." No, not Willie Nelson. This song was written by two members of Canned Heat. Hmm. Canned Heat was a blue a uh, uh, Kind of a hippie blues band in the '60s, and I th I think Kent Heat played at Woodstock even, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, they were really good. They really had done their research, and they, you know, they were really kind of record collectors, and so they really knew their history of the blues, and and it showed. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, had this song called "On the Road Again," and I just I loved it. I was crazy about it, and it was a big hit back then what? and uh uh so i just loved it as a song and i always want to put my my own uh my own uh, stamp on everything you know i have to do it my way mm -hmm. i don't want to copy other people that's there's no reason to copy and so uh i want that so i included it on my uh uh forever adventures in 12 string album and that has that actually is the track track two on on side one of that of that that uh, acoustic 12 string album and so i pulled it over to put it as the last song on this uh some of all my sins electric album and it's the only acoustic song on it but i just love it and nobody had really heard heard it so I included it. Well, let's let people hear it right now. We'll listen yeah. 
on the road again. Uh, we got to step out for a little commercial. This is a Mike Gormley show. We'll see you back in a minute or two. Great.